I just blow my engine. How funny is this? Look, Duramax, Ford, weird, weird. You got my number now. I'm here. Hey, Josh, yeah. you gotta buy a 64 now, buddy. Yeah, I'm gonna buy a 64. Oh, yeah. Come on, man. It's just a DPF. It's plugged up, okay? It's not the Duramax. All right, so here goes the truck back to Josh uh, to ride his diesel service. We got it all hooked up and we're ready to go. See ya. All right, y'all. The truck finally made it. I just flew in from Colorado last night and this truck came in today. So about an 18 hour trip for him. But yeah, I ended up having to pay a hotshot trucker to come out here and deliver my gooseneck and my truck. And it was really nice of him to do that. And again, guys, here we are at Ryan's Diesel Service. Thank God I have good friends. We're gonna go ahead and take care of this. We're gonna get this squared up, man. I think the truck might start. We might be able to pull it off the trailer without any issues, but it will eventually die within about 20 seconds. So, but that's pretty much it. We're going to go ahead and get her unloaded and stay tuned guys. Cause I'm really interested to see how bad that DPF is plugged up. I'm actually going to drop the exhaust, pull the EGR valve off. We have to bake the stuff, clean it out and put it all back on. And I should be good to go and figure out what the heck is going on. Why it's not regening the way it should. Okay guys. So just like I said, I got it off the plane last night. My good friend Ryan, the owner of Ryan's Diesel Service here in North Prairie, Wisconsin. I gotta give a big shout out to him for allowing me to do this because uh, I don't know what I'd do without you at this point. So thank you. No problem, Seriously. glad we could help you, absolutely. absolutely. So let's just jump right into it. So basically the truck is now here, it's the very next day. I got a hotel, um, this is gonna be extremely expensive, but what we're gonna do today guys, uh, since the truck, as you know, is plugged up, the DPF is completely plugged up. What do you call that, face plugged or something? Basically, for simple terms, completely restricted. There's not enough exhaust flow that's able to go out. Exactly, like he said, and when I start the truck, uh, exhaust doesn't come out the tailpipe. <laughs> it just stays in there. So yeah, it's like, extremely stressful, but I'm gonna keep the camera running and hopefully everything works out, because this is not gonna be cheap if I destroyed something in that motor. But uh, stay tuned, we're gonna remove everything. Uh, inspect everything. This is your forte. I'm not exactly sure how you service the EGR emissions when they plug up. So basically what we'll end up doing at this point is we'll put the scanner on. I know we kind of did uh, off camera some preliminary inspection on it to kind of see what the codes were. Everything's actually pointing towards the particulate filter. So what we'll end up doing is we'll pull the filter off there. Um, we'll look into it, see what we can kind of see as far as that goes. There's a couple different local companies. Uh, there's a Peterbilt dealer uh, and a couple other uh, smaller mop pa shops around here that can actually take those. Uh, they'll actually cut the ends off of them. We can ship it out to them. They'll actually put them in the machine that'll actually clean out the whole filter itself. Um, completely blast everything out. Why they're doing that then, um, why the truck's apart and everything, we can start the truck. It's gonna throw a million lights on. We don't care. We can reset everything, which there are reset procedures and everything uh, further down the road we'll have to do. Start the truck, make sure it's good, make sure oil pressure's good, make sure we don't have, you know, the tick and knock like what he was hearing when, when he was out in Colorado. Just kind of make sure everything's good. Uh, give it a once over. We've had a couple other trucks that have come through like this in the past before, uh, you know, industrial trucks, they were Cummins, and uh, they ended up actually having, uh, resulting in turbo issues, because basically everything was just coming back through the opposite way. Uh, like, yeah, I think you saw too, you had some video of the charge pipe actually blown off, so we kind of really want to inspect the rest of the motor. We'll have, a, you know, a day or two here while that stuff's out getting cleaned. Hopefully the guys over there can clean that system out and you don't get stuck having to buy a new one. We can get everything cleaned out, get it all put back in the truck, get all the resets done, get a regen done on it, and get you going back to Michigan. That was another thing that I was having an issue with that I'm still really concerned about is the turbo. Thank God he sells them. They make them here in-house, which is really, really super. So if we do have an issue with the turbo, then we could just switch that out as well. So. Yep, absolutely. Well, all right guys, like I said, we're gonna go ahead and remove the stuff. Maybe we can look into it with a flashlight, show you guys. I'm pretty sure something really is plugged up and it looks like crap and uh, all right, let's spend some money. Stay tuned. So we finally removed the DPF. This is the entire exhaust system. We were able to get it out in one shot. As you can see, we didn't cut it and we're going to go ahead now and take the little scope tool and we're going to shove it right in there because again, we can't 
because we're not going to cut this to see the back of the DPF. We, we got to keep it. So it's our first time looking in. It looks really built up in there too. Yeah, there's definitely a good good amount of curbing in there. Look at the build up right there in the bottom. I can imagine what it looks like all the way to the back. So based on the codes that we were seeing, I believe the one was like a P2463 code. Um, I think what the main culprit cause of this was with that, with that code being set, that's telling us that that particle filter is basically plugged. When we also got this thing apart the rest of the way, um, finding there was actually DEF fluid that was actually running out of the exhaust. And at our, after a further inspection, you could actually see um, the sensor itself, the actual um, DEF injector was actually completely like melted and distorted. So I'm thinking what happened is more than likely at this point right now without seeing anything further, I'm thinking that that sensor was a cause it wasn't able to inject along with the ninth oh, and basically kind of just plugged everything if I had to guess. That would be pure assumption. Well, it makes point. sense too because I wasn't getting full regen is yep. at that. So as it was trying to do it, it would start the process and then just completely end it. Yep. So that makes perfect sense why that the uh, fluid wasn't able to break this down. I can only imagine. That stuff, I mean, we can't go any deeper, unfortunately. I wish I could show you guys really what the DPF looks like, but there's absolutely no way to get in there completely. This probe right here doesn't go that deep. But even just looking at that, just from that little bit on the floor right there, that was just from us scraping out of here. I mean, she's definitely got to be plugged off and restricted. Oh, she's gone. That's, I, why, that's why I was saying, Ryan, it basically, once I started the truck, there was no exhaust coming out of there. Yeah. So. I definitely still feel confident though. I don't think you're gonna have an issue with the with the truck or the engine that way. Um, I know a little bit that when we kind of limp it on the rack, the oil pressure still looks good. So I feel pretty confident we can get her burnt out and you should be rocking. So we'll just go ahead and load this thing in your truck right now and we'll go ahead and take it down to the, the shop to have them go ahead and start baking this thing. Yep. All right, definitely. let's do this. All right guys, so as you can see, the soot grams are at 23. It's very low. What we just did is working. We're gonna go ahead and get it on a test drive. We've had this truck running for a while. We had it up to temp, and uh, let's just make sure everything's good to go. Well, guys, it's the next day. Ryan's driving my truck. <laughs> <laughs> but we were up till... 12.30. 12.30. We just, uh, I mean, we barely got any sleep. We're back on it again. Last night, we called it quitsies because it was just a lot of work. It's so hard to get exhaust off there correctly and intact without having to cut it all up. We had to drop cross members. It was just a lot involved. We were at, the guys came through very solid, man. They did. they did. They definitely got it all cleaned out. Um, they said it was actually on the verge of not actually being savable um, because of how plugged everything was. Um, we've seen that in the past before, but thankfully they were able to come through, get everything cleaned up between that and that new DEF uh, injector. Um, I think we're gonna be solid and good to go and keep on trucking. Thank you so much. Absolutely. Man, and you saved me a ton of money. <laughs> what was it, what would it cost for me to install a brand new exhaust system in that thing? Yeah. Um, Probably actually, five grand? We actually, uh, actually surprisingly enough, a little less than that. We actually just had a guy that actually put uh, uh, DEF into his diesel tank and filled it full and then ran it and literally just destroyed, plugged everything. So roughly, I think when it was all said and done, uh, just for parts, it was about thirty-five to four thousand dollars, uh, plus then labor, the whole rest of the fuel system. So it was quite an expensive repair. <laughs> well, I know a lot of what you guys are going to say. While you're at Ryan's Diesel Service, why don't you guys put a turbo in there, or why don't you do something else that's cool to that truck? I've been gone for over a week now from the house. I don't have time for that stuff right now. I gotta get back on the road and that's why I'm doing this. He's just helping me get out of Dodge at this point. I'm in another state. Right now, guys, I'm currently in Wisconsin, but I live in Michigan. I'm not gonna lie, man. I thought for sure I did something to the motor. <laughs> I was so nervous. Even this process of those guys baking it out, cleaning everything out for me. Oh yeah. I'm like, yep. yeah, but once I put it on, what's my engine gonna sound like? And it sounds brand new. Oh yeah, no, it sounds good. Like you said, I think, uh, think you'll be good for some more miles of the falling all over. Well, hopefully I don't have to pop my hood on the side of the highway and <laughs> do this all over again. So, uh, but all right, guys, hey, stay tuned. Um, I know this has been kind of a lengthy process and I appreciate you sticking in with me. And guys, let me know in the comments what you think about this whole deal. And if you do have a vehicle, I'd say DPF above, so like an 07.5 or above, and you have that EGR emissions and all that, make sure you really pay attention to those, the, the soot grams 
that is so important. I had no idea about that until I talked to this guy. And definitely a huge shout out to Edge for that, uh, having that uh, ability to actually monitor that and see that. Um, and knowing when it actually goes in is so nice. I mean, both my, my trucks, you know, you guys know we got the 15 chop truck and then we got the, the 21 chop truck. And both those trucks, that was one of the first things we put in. And uh, just for reference for you guys out there too, on an LML, you should be seeing about 33 to 37 grams of soot. That truck should be wanting to try to go into an active regen. And the L5Ps are a little bit different. Those generally are getting upwards north of 100. 110 grams of soot then the dpf will go into a warming stage and then it'll go on active again edge is nice they got a really nice little setup at the top uh, they got a green light that'll go in go on and go active when it's actually into regen which is awesome for you guys at least you know it's actually work do, doing something and working and it also if let's say your grams is still continuing to build like what was happening to josh he was able to notice it right away call me say hey man i think there's an issue going on at least kind of you know figure out what's going on, you know, as far as, hey, yeah, that's way too much in there when you had found, you know, that, what was it, 150 grams of soot 150 or something. something yeah. yeah. <laughs> so at least we knew at least where to start, so. Well, it was kind of hard in, in videos you guys just saw there when we were looking in with a scope. It was just, you can't really see anything. And unfortunately, we had a, we'd have to cut the exhaust and I don't want to do that, especially since it's closest to the downpipe, it's double walled. There's no way I'm going to weld that back together and it'll run right, you know, once you cut it, that's kind of it. So, but again, guys, huge shout out to Ryan's Diesel Service. And if you're interested in any service work, definitely reach out to him. I'll leave his information in the description below. They're located pretty close to Waukesha, um, kind of the Milwaukee area of Wisconsin, uh, but North Prairie to be exact. And also, if you're interested in his turbos, I got to give a huge shout out to him. If you guys own a Power Stroke, Duramax, or Cummins, definitely check him out and use that discount code TRUCKMASTER. We're pulling in right now, but we'll go ahead and see you guys here back at the house. And I'm going to go ahead and take my truck and get the heck out of here. Thank you. Absolutely. Safe <laughs> travels. Now that right. we're back on the road, I'm headed back to Michigan. This is what I was averaging. I didn't want to talk about it. It was kind of embarrassing. But there's a reason why I was averaging that because obviously we had issues. So I went ahead and just reset it. And we're going to see what it's like when I get back. I'm curious to see what kind of fuel economy I'm going to get after you know we cleaned everything back up. So we've been on the road for about six hours now. And this is kind of what I'm averaging. My best is about 25 mpg. And we've been sitting in traffic probably every like hour for about 30 to 45 minutes. It's nuts today. So I'm averaging right now 18 miles to the gallon, but I'll tell you what, man, the truck runs so much better after we did all that work to it. We made it back home. Thank God, no issues whatsoever. And like you guys saw on there, we had 24 miles per gallon. That was the highest that I've seen. But I think regular city driving, I'm gonna average between 17 to 19 MPG, which I think is pretty good for a 7,500 pound pickup truck. It's kind of weird though, because after I delivered the giveaway truck, I'm sort of light. So now I just have the LBZ, which is, you know, my normal daily driver. This is what I use when I'm not taking long trips. And of course we have the Hammer Power Stroke 6.0. And the Cummins is still kicking, by the way, sounding good. I'm working on her. And then we have the Life Max in the backyard, which I need to get to still. But man, it's nice to be home. I've been gone for a while. Total driving time one way to Nevada from Michigan is actually about 30 hours. So yeah, let's just say that uh, she didn't make it when I got back to Colorado. Luckily, I was able to deliver the truck, but unfortunately, I wasn't able to get it even halfway back to Michigan before the DPF plugged up. I wanted to give you guys a follow-up video on this one. I know a lot of you guys were wondering what was going on. And to sum this up right here, the DPF, the diesel particulate filter, was plugged up with black soot, which in turn choked my engine. Also, my DEF injector was plugged, and we found a wiring harness that was sort of melted as well. So it just was not allowing it to regen, and that's exactly why everything just completely plugged up. It couldn't have happened in a worse area in the Rockies of Colorado I'm just really glad that I have good friends that can help me out get me back on the road but you know real topic here I know some of you guys are gonna talk about this well first off I read the comments you guys are saying should have bought a Cummins should have bought a Ford you know blah 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 whatever I'm not sure if you guys realize this but this is an emissions issue this isn't a diesel engine issue or a specific brand issue the Fords and the Dodges both have the same exact problems if they are running an EGR, a DPF, you know, coolers, stuff like that. Do I love my 99 Cummins with no emissions? Mechanical? Absolutely, this is awesome. Also the Wife Max, the LB7, doesn't have an EGR, doesn't have a DPF, doesn't have none of that crap. I don't know if it's in my head or if I'm just imagining this, but I think that in the future, trucks like this are gonna be worth some serious coin because they don't have that stuff on there. It's not all regulated. But I already know some of you guys are gonna ask me this question. Why not just delete it? Just cut off the exhaust, you know, run straight pipe, get a modified ECU or ECM, slap a new computer in there that's already tuned, 
and you don't have to worry about it. And that's really easy to say and all, but I don't know if you realize this, but that's like $6,000 just to tune a L5P Duramax. And since you watched this far, I'm just gonna leave this little bit in there. If I even do that, let's just say I even attempt to do that to my truck. Since I have too many eyes watching my channel, I'll never document it, you'll never know. I think it's pretty sad that you're treated worse than a drug dealer if you delete your truck. I just think it's horrible from the government. But that's another topic, I don't wanna go on a rant. But you guys saw the follow up on there again, DPF, the DEF injector, the ninth injector, and there was also a small little wiring harness that connects to the ninth injector that was melted. So we replaced all that, we baked out the inside of the exhaust, we put everything back together, and she runs tip top. But unfortunately, there's always gonna be that question in my mind, will it happen again? But I guess that's what I need to decide here in the future. But anyways, guys, yeah, hey, that's it. Make sure you guys subscribe. I hope you guys enjoyed the content. If you guys have any suggestions or feedback, definitely leave them in the comments below. It might be able to help somebody out. But in the meantime, we're gonna keep going in the shop. I got a lot of projects I gotta finish, especially the wife's truck. But the goal with the wife's truck is 1,000 horsepower. I'm hoping we can hit that before the end of this year, but we'll see. But enough with the drama. I need to get back to the builds. Thank you guys so much for watching. We'll see you on the next one. Stay tuned. Mm -hmm.